Hello everyone. On behalf of the entire University of Texas Arlington and emergency reporting teams, thank you for being part of the Fire 1500 and Safety Analytics Program, the better way to gauge your department's safety. This first session will introduce you to the library module. For the next 10 minutes or so, I'll be your guide. My name is Tom Lewis and after 22 years in the fire service, I am honored to be the current Department of Defense and International Trainer for Emergency Reporting. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to this overview on the Emergency Reporting Library module. Not only is this an excellent platform for storing all of your department's key documents, it is also an essential module for managing your NFPA 1500 compliant safety program. After logging into Emergency Reporting, click on the Library module. Here you'll see a series of NFPA 1500 categories and subcategories that are used to drive the organization gauge of safety analytics. These are part of every emergency reporting account. It's also the best place to start assessing your agency's adherence to NFPA 1500. In this session, we'll take a look at how the NFPA 1500 components within the library work. You'll notice the categories are sorted alphabetically. The first set is alphabetical for NFPA 1500 categories and subcategories. Below them are user-generated categories, also alphabetically sorted, but independent of the 1500 categories. This keeps the order consistent for all users, kind of like a real library. Additionally, you'll notice that the organization gauge is reading zero. Since yours is a brand new account, we don't have anything in the library to drive this gauge. Don't worry, you'll get that needle moving in no time. Okay, Let's explore a category. In this case, we'll select Emergency Operations, which references Chapter 8 of NFPA 1500. As I click on the expand arrow, you'll notice the category expands and reveals 10 subcategories. Each of these subcategories references a paragraph in Chapter 8 that explicitly mentions a specific SOP or other document vital for an organization's safety program as it relates to emergency operations. With the category expanded, let's look at each of the icons and their functionality. First is the Add File icon. By clicking this in either a category or subcategory, you can upload a file to the library. There is no limit to the number of files you can upload. However, there is a size limit of 32 megs for each file being uploaded. So if you have a file that's larger than 32 megs, you can use the next icon to bring it into the system. This icon is the Add URL icon. By clicking this icon, you can add a URL address to your library, making it very easy to access large files stored remotely or on websites. The icon on the far right is the lock icon. You'll notice that it is subdued currently. Once we begin adding files or links, it will become bright red, indicating you may lock the category or subcategory. This is an essential step we'll revisit later. All right, so that covers the functionality of categories and subcategories. Next up, let's add a document. I'm going to pick the second subcategory in Emergency Operations, Communications SOPs. As you review NFPA 1500, this is where Mayday procedures are cited. Step one, click on the Add File icon. Next, browse for the file you wish to upload. Select the file. You may double click on it or click open. The file will then upload and auto populate its name, although you can change it if you'd like. You must enter a description. Lastly, you can enter a review date. This is the date your organization plans to review this document for currency. Although NFPA 1500 only mentions review dates for certain documents, your organization may want to set a date for every document to ensure it's always relevant and up to date. The date is important because once that date passes, the organization gauge will move to the right as a reminder that this document is in need of review by your agency. Okay, when you're done, Click Done. Nice how that works, huh? You'll see that the document is now stored in the subcategory. You'll also notice five more icons. I'll explain those now. The History icon 
gives you a quick look at the document's history. As an added bonus, this is where prior versions of the document are also stored, so you can easily compare the current with older versions with just a few clicks. The icon on the far right here is to download the document to a local machine or shared cloud storage platform. The info icon opens a summary of the document's metadata. The edit icon is like the add file icon in that you can upload a different document, change the current document's name, description, or review date. The download icon here lets you immediately open or save the document to a local machine or other file storage location. And lastly, you can delete the file altogether by clicking the trash icon. We won't do that right now. That covers all the icons. Moving back toward the left, I'd like to mention that you can sort and filter for documents. You can sort high to low or low to high for both next review date, upload a date, and the document's name. Both upload a date and next review date allow you to filter by the exact date you're looking for. The name header lets you search for the name of the document simply by entering a few characters. Okay, last but not least, once you have all your agency required documents in your subcategory and category, you can click on the lock. Enter your password. and click lock. By doing this, you're acknowledging the documents contained within this subcategory are valid, relevant, and adhere to the expectations of both NFPA 1500 and your agency. The magic of locking this subcategory is that it will move your organization gauge to the green. Let's check it out. By mousing over and clicking on the green light bar, you'll notice that the communications SOP subcategory is locked. Nicely done. You're now on your way to becoming an even safer fire department. There's more work to be done. As you can see, we have 52 more categories and subcategories to fill out. Thanks for watching this first installment on the library module.